Hello everyone, welcome back to Stoneheart Me Banto. So uh, today we're gonna deal with invaders soon. But uh, another thing I want to do today is with the maze and I want to make sure that we can progress towards uh, a tier 3 town. And to do so we do need to gather a few ingredients which is Varanus meat, raw mutton and rabbit jerky. And we already do have enough stone to craft uh, the font of fire. So this is what I want to do to achieve the next uh, town upgrade tier to tier 3. So this is gonna be maybe a little bit difficult uh, because the Varanus does not always spawn. Uh, mutton, if I don't remember it wrong, you get from uh, sheep, and we don't have a shepherd. I was thinking of maybe getting a shepherd, but then I noticed that on my trapper it would be maybe Danny could be our shepherd perhaps because I saw that our other trapper, uh, the Canadian, I think it was. A Canadian that he has not very good stats and spirit should help with uh, being a shepherd. <clears throat> I think so at least. A high spirit uh, halfling will easily befriend animals, stand strong in uh, stand strong against enemies and craft exceptional things more often. So it should maybe help. I don't know. I guess we could if we want to. We can actually try to do like an a trapper, but at the same time, I mean, and shepherd, but at the same time, since we have such a low mind, so this one will actually make you level up a little bit faster. And therefore, it might be better to do that Danny would be it, or we can do get another trapper and at level 2 or 3 we will promote to be a shepherd, because the more level you have in one profession, the harder it's going to be in the next one. The other option would be to uh, simply use market stalls and hope to get the merchant you want to get. So it would be to use this one. So that's why I'm kind of thinking that I would like to perhaps craft a few more. So I'm thinking I'm doing maybe some wooden market stalls. This one need wood and cloth. And the reason I might want to do this one is because I have a lot of problem with pelts. I don't get enough pelts. Uh, I think, I guess my weavers may, may be spending all of them. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm not getting like almost any pellets at all, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. But uh, then I think we would go and make some market stalls. Let's make like five of those. Drag it up here. And then our weaver should get some work, so we should need to do 24 cloth, which is going to be quite a long time to do them. So we might want to drag this one up. I'm just going to have it above this one, so whenever we can make cloth we'll do so. So hopefully that works out and we have to wait for the cooldown for this one. I wonder if we do have a shepherd's crook. It would have been nice to get a shepherd. Okay, so we don't have that one. Let's see, can we make it? I think we can, right? Should be pretty easy to do. Oh yeah, we have exactly what we need. So let's make sure we put that at the top and maybe we'll get on one. So let's see the invaders, where are they? Up here, okay, nice. Get the troop over here then. Shouldn't be too hard, and uh, let's use the move command. I guess attack would be working now, but the thing is that when you play in the Arctic Bime, when it's like snow and blizzards and stuff, your people lose health, and it's a big, big risk that uh, the cleric is gonna stop next to your workers and try to heal them instead of following your party to attack the person you have decided that you're gonna attack up in the mountains and stuff. This was a pretty easy battle. Ace got a new title. Log Splinter. They killed five minions of the wilds. Oh wow. Local hero. They defeated the defender of the town from a hundred enemies. It's finally safe. It's never safe in Stone Hearth. There will always be new enemies, right? Oh yeah, we have a trader that's coming back. Uh, one guy in the bone maze, nine large crates. Okay. I think we should have the large crates ready by now. Good, good. We won the battle. Nice. I'm also going to have this one, strange trading. And we want raw vegetables. So we will see if we can maybe use our potatoes here. Our sweet potatoes. Maybe they will count as raw vegetables and we will put these out to the bunny people. Oh, it looks like they definitely count as that. I might want to get an... Um, Herbalist, like having a herbalist with uh, the ascendancy, I mean the Northern Lions, 
the Arctic biome is very, very useful because they can make seeds so we can remake more of the winter moss and more sweet potatoes. Very, very useful. I'm not sure if we need to buy them. I'm gonna buy a little bit of copper. I'm not sure how much I have. And the reason I wanna buy that is because we're gonna work a little bit with the engineer today. We're gonna try to get some turrets, hopefully not too far from now. Would be awesome. The visitor nods, dropping a few small pouches of gold dust into your hand as payment before bouncing, bounding away. Basket in arms. Two gold legs. Thank you. Okay, so with the engineer, we want to make sure we make the engineer tool bench first, of course. We need to be able to craft things. And after that, it would pretty much be to start to make some gears and stuff. So we need to have iron and also bronze. So it's going to take a while to do those. And uh, we do have our very first turret, which is this one. The turnip shooter. I haven't really used this one very much. I'm not sure how good this one is. But I do know that this one, the turret that we get later for level 3, is really, really, really useful. So if you want, we can already queue them up. This one needs iron gears, it needs bronze gears, it needs steel ingots. So this one is quite difficult to make. I'm gonna put to make four of them, so whenever we can do them, we're gonna do them. So bronze gears, we just need to get out the workbench. So where will we put this for now? And this house is, is progressing pretty good. We had to rebuild that one. I fixed it a template that updated it on the workshop as well. So if you guys who use it, you should be able to get updated one with correct uh, quality of shares. And I uh, also did add our gate kind of tower thing here. I added this one in the uh, template as well. And I might be adding another version that doesn't have a roof later if that's of interest to people. I'm probably going to do another gate later, we will see. I'm thinking of using the portcullis, the gate thing. The only thing that I don't like about it is that it's an even number and most of the stuff in this game works best in odd numbers. So if you're going to put shrines and stuff, they most of the time works best in odd numbers. Yes, we want to do the trading. So we should have gone, gotten one guy in the bone maze, I think it was. Rax, pray, maybe. Should be here we have it. A guy in the bone maze. Really, really powerful uh, level 4 weapon. That should be very useful. I saw also that um, the Archipelago mod, if you guys know about that one. I do use it, that's why we have our Fisher class here. But I know that Bruna has added some sort of boats to it. I'm not sure if that is in my build or not. Let's see if maybe the Fisher has something, if they do it. Oh, here it is, Boat the Dock. Okay, so this is a new, really cool thing. Let's try this, guys. And I have way too much bundle of fibers. I'm gonna try to use up all of that. Place it at the edge facing the water. A second one will be auto created on the far other side. Halfling will now be able to cross the water on their own. From one block to another using boats. So everyone has their own boat. Yes. So this is pretty cool. And very clever to make it that way. So I'm gonna make four. Maybe it doesn't make sense. But uh, the cool thing is that, as I understand it, if I, let's say I would drop it here, then it would create another one at the far edge over here. And then we can take boats, I'm not sure if the goblins or the ogres, <laughs> if they can take the boats or if it's only allowed to me. Because if it's only allowed to me, that could be very useful, because then I could go over here without like opening a path into my town. So we're definitely going to try that, guys. A new cool feature with the Archipelago mod. Feel free to check it out. It's on the Steam Workshop. Uh, we beat the daily goal. Not going to accept anyone. Because we're not going to go for any more people at this point. Later on, though, we might get some new, some new people to join. Well, yeah, I wanted to do a um, uh, trapping ground. I was thinking of doing one up here. And in this one, I was thinking of trying to experiment with perhaps um, capturing some small game. We do have two trappers at the moment. We might uh, change it soon. But I thought that since we have two, then we might be able to do three of the trapping grounds. And then we can get some rabbit jerk from this one. We might get some uh, big game. I think in both of these are big game. Okay, we have, do have some small animal that one so so one big game and two for small animal trapping 
And I would say, like, probably the best one that I found so far for at least getting a food in a very early game is to have the one for bugs, because uh, they trap a lot of bugs in them. Loads of them. And uh, then you cook and make them to delicious, tasty food. Let's see, do we have these little boat things that would be cool to try out? Okay, we do. Nice. So, let's see how it worked then. So, I guess we just put it here and then it will be adding one on the other side then. So, let's try that. So, here. We should see one popping up there later once it gets placed, I think. Let's see it. I guess while we're waiting for them to come over here, let's get to the any near and see if we can make some things. We can also make some traps. That could be a good early thing for us to do. And we can put them out and traps are also pretty powerful. This one is super powerful. Uh, this one I tried a tiny bit, not really sure how good it is. And this one I never tried. This is also from the archipelago, a cocoa bomb. But this one is super powerful. Damage and short it stuns enemies that steps near it. So some critter traps. Let's make like, let's make eight of those maybe. This is an um, okay, nothing, no level required. Let's just do four maybe. And hopefully this could give us a little bit of XP. Can put to make a few more cogs. Let's see if our blacksmith is busy. Okay, they already put this one out. Okay, nice. Let's see, do we have one on this side? Okay, there it is. Cool, right? So let's say now where we want to um, be harvest some. I wonder if the soldiers can go over that way as well. Will they take the boat when going over? Oh, look at that, guys. A soldier is taking the boat. Look at that. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? I wonder if the boats also change depending on which uh, faction you're playing. So if you play Northern Lions, you get these boats. Maybe with the Ascendancy, you get a different kind. Archipelago, you get a different as well, and Raya. I really, really hope so. But this is so awesome. Isn't this really cool, guys? Like I said, uh, hopefully the goblins can take these boats. Oh, I just, I just love this one. This is like, it feels like almost in a new game when you get something like this. Because this didn't exist in the game at all before. So when we got this, it started to exist pretty much. So I guess now they're just gonna go over. Going back again after we send them here. So that is pretty awesome. That's gonna be so useful. Like if you get an fisher, maybe maybe you start at like an island and then you have some boats to get to the mainland. And that could be so useful, right? Oh, they're clogging together a bit. I think one of them is going really, really slow. I wonder if they move faster if I do it like that. Yeah, it looks like so. What happens if I do it like, oh, you're gonna go back? Oh, they actually go back then. Okay, nice. That's pretty cool. Highly recommend checking that out if you guys are interested in uh, trying that out for yourself. Pretty cool. So they're coming pretty far with this one. The building of town is kind of um, slow at the moment, but we will get some more houses done hopefully soon. Let's see if we can get a good merchant. An animal trainer, okay. There's some pretty cool animals. I don't know, I never really got attached to like buying some animals here. It just feels like it's struggle to feed them and stuff, so I don't think I'm gonna buy any now. And you're very, very expensive as well. What we might want to do here, just for a little bit of quality for our town to move a little bit faster, let's move and uh, make a little tiny little road to go out here. Craft of one, yes, we can get the trapping a little bit faster. And up here, we will see later, I'm probably gonna change this, this was mostly a temporary solution. So, you know, later on we might change this so that... Um, we might even move up the wall here, we will see. We will have it somewhere around here. Then we might cover this one with the walls as well, so we can build on top here. I kind of like the idea of having like different levels. We had to have some houses down here, some houses up here. We could even have some here, but if we go here, the village is just going to be so insanely big, so probably not going to be a good idea to do so. So do we have some more market stalls ready? We do have one, and very nice. That means we can send in one more merchant. 
hopefully get uh, the things we need. I'm gonna try to first buy it before I decide that we're gonna like uh, get a shepherd. Well, I might want to have a shepherd later on away, but we'll see. I kind of want to try to put this one out. It looks a lot bigger there than this in game, but that should work out hopefully pretty good. This house is very crowded though, so I don't think it's gonna work very good there. Let's, let's maybe have some... Uh, they can see that the side here. Relax a little bit here. Oh, look at that! The goblins actually do take the boats. They do take the boats, guys. So it's not a, like a safe way for you. <laughs> and these are the, even running. They are, they, really, they are so eager to get up, so they're even running in the boats. Kind of like Flintstones, where they like, lift up the car and just run away. <laughs> okay, so we might have to be careful. I kind of want to see... What's gonna happen if an ogre wanna go over? Because that could look pretty interesting, right? <laughs> or like a Varanus or something. I'm not sure if that works or not, but... <laughs> could be pretty, pretty funny. So I guess if you wanna make this secure, what you wanna do is just to... Have some sort of a blockage here for... The goblins can go through it. Yeah, simply make a little tiny wall or entrance thingy, or even a house. It could be a little building here that you go through and then you go over and then at the same at the other side. So let's just experiment with that. Like a quick, quick build. Nothing advanced or anything. Then Tanta starts to make a really big house and everything starts to be advanced anyway. <laughs> so um, let's see here. I'm not gonna make it so big as I said. So it might be good enough with 7x7. Seven seven. And then we probably wanna drag this down. I'm not sure what's gonna happen with this thing. I'm kind of thinking of doing like something like that. So I'm having it all go all the way out, and uh, then I think that we do like a wall here and another wall here. We can do the same thing at this side. I have no idea how this is gonna end up looking, but I think it's gonna be pretty okay. I hope. And we can also do reinforce the doors if we really don't want to break them, and we can have a double here. And we will do the very, very same thing at this side. So once we're done with this one, we just copy-paste it to the other side. And then we can make a nice little roof here. So uh, let's grab some color. Um, I guess we can use the wall. The wall tool kind of works pretty good for making... That's going to give some nice depth as well, since we made these poke out a little bit. And I think this might be maybe good enough here. We'll end up with a little bit of higher slope in the middle. It's always fun when you get like new things like this. It's like it refreshes the game, it becomes more interesting again. So uh, for the roof, what color do I want to use? I might want to use some new color. I kind of want to do some uh, blood wood. Maybe that one. Perhaps, just for fun, we might want to add in a little kind of board thing here. Perhaps change the lower one, this one. That's gonna go a bit too far, maybe, so let's go like that. Our little, little boathouse is uh, definitely taking shape. I want it to um, kind of make something a little bit more. I think it looks kind of boring at sides. I wonder if, if I kind of want to, in one way, I want to do something like that. I wonder if it's gonna affect anything if I would um, cover it like that. Probably not gonna be a good idea. That looks kind of weird.
Maybe something like that would be nice. So then we want to change this one, make sure that it's going to be a uh, roof, yes, yeah, tag it like that, and then we can see through it easier. And I feel like it's pretty much done like this. And what we can also do would be to change this to be a wall and cycle the normal, make sure the arrow is facing away from us. So then when we're trying to look through, we will actually be able to see through it. Okay, so there we go. We might want to do one more tiny, tiny thing. Bound to want to add more things, of course. So uh, what I want to do is to have a little lantern thing and um, I kind kind of want to make it to be with the carpenter at the same time if this is going to be for like the northern lines we want to make sure it's a thing that we can craft early on and I'm going to just going to have probably should we have one of each side? I kind of feel like it's, the importance is that when you go on the boat they're going to see the lights so they know where they're going to go I'm just going to name that boat Travel, and uh, I will be sharing this one soon as well. So then we will add in another one at the other side. Just going to rotate that one, and see... Okay, we have to chop down this tree first. So let's just uh, destroy this for now. So I wonder if I can... Will this actually drop down? Uh, I think we might have a problem. Maybe let's go back here. I think these are maybe causing issues. Let's see how it will be if we just do it like that instead. Update it. There we go. If we want to, we can add in this thing at the bottom. I kind of feel like I want to have it, so. And it's really cool because this way we could, if you want to build like an, I don't know what you would call it, like an artificial island, you would build your own like island or keep out here. And then hopefully if we put this one here, it will be attached to our like keep if we have one out here. That would be cool. But I think this travel thing is going to be pretty nice. It's sitting like perfect for the goblins, I see. They do have a camp here. So why don't we take the boats over and uh, we, let's go fight these goblins. Make sure we use the move command again. That's where we're going to go. The centaur can't find any food. I get this error message quite a lot. I'm wondering if it's because sometimes they drop like um, food on roofs and they want to get the, that specific food instead of uh, getting whatever is next to them. We need to clear up this area. Hopefully we'll have enough time soon to do some clearing. I might want to change a few people. So we'll take like two workers like Oblix and uh, Patrushenko. That they will not be building, they will be harvesting and mining and hauling and all that stuff instead of only building. I think it's a good idea to do that pretty often. Because then you have time for looting and stuff. And you can also change your soldiers so they will be doing some hauling. I really really like this, it's so awesome. These boats are amazing. Good job, Bruno. Good job, man. Feel free to thank Bruno in chat for this one. It's so awesome, guys. So, I think attack command should be working now, right? I wonder what would happen if they add would add like some sea creature and they're out in the ocean. And then later on they would like uh, start shooting arrows at enemies if they're close by outside in the water. There we go. Sure, we destroy this one. So no more goblins in this area. That's awesome. But that's really cool. Really, really, really happy that they Bruno added this little thing. This house is gonna prevent us from getting invaded from over the water. That's gonna be cool. But guys, this is gonna be it for today with Stone Hearth in the Northern Lines. I hope you guys like this the boat, and I highly recommend to try it out for Archipelago mod as well. So thanks for watching today's episode, I hope you enjoyed and feel free to leave a like on the video. And also, if you are a subscriber, feel free to hit the, the bell notification so you will get notification when Bantu uploads videos. And uh, see you guys next time everybody!